the Baptist Church and the Methodist Church actually were founded in two different locations across the street from one another. Now one church had a pastor and the other didn't, so they had to borrow the pastors. The pastor from the one church would actually preach in this building one Sunday and the other building the next Sunday. We found that, that we worked well together and over time, as the community grew, the highway came through the middle of town. In 1929, the town was starting to flourish and became a resort town. And the town decided to expand and the highway came right down the middle of the town. Unfortunately, the Methodist church was right in the middle of it. And so the churches had been working together for all of their history and they decided, well, why not just combine the two churches? They decided to make it one congregation and became a, a Baptist and a Methodist church. And that's how it becomes federated. Deep down in my heart, I am a teacher. I'm a preacher. I am someone who likes to share God's Word and to help them to get a deeper knowledge of who God is. We have a part in our service where we can ask for prayers and we have a wonderful organist. We have good music. It's just a comfortable, loving worship service. Well, I sing in the choir and I pushed real hard to bring in audio and video so we can run slides during the service. And I do a lot of running around. <laughs> it to me of when I was growing up, it's still a traditional style of worship, but it still has a flavor of some modern touches. One thing when people ask me to sum up our church in one word, I always say fun. We are fun, we have a lot of fun here. We have a thing called a big yellow bus. You know, we go to baseball games, we go to hockey games, and we get involved. We have an outreach program, and when they're called to action, and we need to do something like raise money for children, we have a chili cook-off, and it's amazing. I mean, all of a sudden there's like an army of crockpots that come out, and I didn't know there was that many chili recipes in existence and it's amazing what we do here. This church has a great feeling of fellowship. We get together and we just have fun. This congregation is full of people who are ministering in different ways. I may be pastor, I may be preaching on a Sunday morning, but there are people who work in the area of food pantry or work with charitable organizations in our community. We have an annual Christmas bazaar every year and we raise money. Uh, all the ladies make things on their own and they, we have a craft group that gets together and we make crafts. The money that we make goes to missions. We give money to Love Inc., Love in the Name of Christ. In town here we give to Habitat for Humanity. We've given to PADS. We do support the Crop Walk and the local uh, Wakanda Island Lake Food Pantry. And we also pledge to our own church. We make a pledge and we always fulfill that pledge. And so the money that we do make, we use in the community and beyond and in our own church. If there's anybody that needs something, like if you say, I need somebody to help me move a couch today, it's like, like 10 people will show up at your house. If somebody is grieving, there's always hugs, there's always kind words. People that are in need, like the last family that was in need, they were gonna lose their house. All of a sudden they had enough money to stay another month. That's one thing about this church, everybody helps everybody. The generosity of this church to me is overwhelming. Anytime we have ever asked for money for the food pantry or for a mission project or for anything you can think of, it just astounds me how much the people in congregation will give. We're focusing on working with other Christian organizations to help people in the community. But the key word is community. I have a wife, her name is Tiffany. She is a teacher in Carpentersville. And we were blessed with a little girl that we adopted. Her name is Abigail and she's our pride and joy. It is wonderful not only being a father for the first time, but also to be raising our child up in the arms of, of these people who love her so much. 
there is just a love and acceptance of us as a family. My neighbor was coming to church here. He invited me to come. And I have a handicapped son who's 38 now, but at that time he was three or four years old and seizured a lot. And I'm like, oh gosh, I don't know. And he said, well, just come. You know Val Whitman, she watches the nursery. So we came and I talked to her and she goes, oh yeah, I'll be fine watching John. And wouldn't you know the first Sunday that we were here, he had a seizure. <laughs> And she didn't even come and get me out of church. She handled it. And to tell you the truth, that's the reason I kept coming. I was comfortable leaving John in the nursery, and it just grew from there. The accessibility of the church is pretty good. Even 28 years ago, the ramp up here was, was already installed. Since then, we've added the handicapped doors on the front. The sanctuary is loop for hearing impaired people. For a while, we had someone that was here that was completely deaf, and we were able to offer a sign interpreter that came in on Sundays and was able to sign for that person. We're pretty attuned to special needs, especially in the elderly people. And I, I generally think if there's a need, that somehow we'll figure out how to get it done, if that allows someone to attend our church. Our church has a long tradition of respecting women in the ministry. We don't have restrictions on, on who God can call and to speak. We have leaders of, of all genders and ages in our congregation. I'd like to see you know, all the pews filled. And you know, you always want younger people, but I think every person is, is important no, no matter what age they are. And I think we have something to offer for everyone. What I'm looking for in the future is to maintain what we have, but try to bring up a younger generation. I think we've made some progress, and I think that we're all working in the same direction, and I'm hopeful that we'll get there soon. I think what led us here to begin with was, although we both grew up in church, we were the typical people that kind of left church when we were young and single. And I think it took our first child to recognize that, you know, we're missing something. If you don't go to church, where does your child learn about Christ and Christianity? So I think we figured out when she was born that we, we better find a home church again and we better raise the kids up in a Christian atmosphere. And whether or not they continue or don't continue, I think even if kids go away for a while like we did and come back, there's still that candle that's lit in them. And that there's still the stuff they've learned and the stuff they've been through while at the church is a very important foundation for them. And I, I'm glad we did it and I'm extremely glad we came here. You come into the church, it feels like God's house. This will always be our church, no matter where we are. It's a wonderful building, it's a wonderful church, and it's a great place to bring your children here. The Federated Church of Wakanda is a family. It has deep history that goes far, far into the past, and it has a rich history that will continue working into the future. We are all a part of this great tapestry which is the Federated Church of Wakanda. If you're looking for a place to belong, a place where people truly love one another, where they come together to worship and to pray and support one another in times of needs. We welcome you here. We hope that you find a home here. We hope that you find a place where you can fellowship and grow in your personal walk of faith. This is the Federated Church of Wakanda, and we welcome you here. <laughs>